Hey everyone, it's Anthony from Pretty Printer here. In today's video, I'll be introducing you to Flask WT Forms. So Flask WT Forms is an extension that wraps WT Forms, and WT Forms is a Python library that makes handling forms in your apps a lot easier. So if you've used SQL Alchemy before, there are some similarities. You create a class to represent a form, just like you create a class to represent a row or a table in SQL Alchemy, and then the objects will be dealt with directly to handle the form data. So of course this will make more sense once I actually write code, but it makes things a lot easier because you don't have to worry about each individual request value. You don't have to worry about error checking, stuff like that. Flask WT Forms will handle all of that for you. And this will be the first of a series of videos on Flask WT Forms because there are quite a few things that you can do in it. So before I get started, I want to show you my Flask cheat sheet. It's just a few things that are common in Flask that if you don't know how to do already, this will be a great reference for you. So you can just quickly glance at this and see what needs to be done. If you want to get this, just go to prettyprinted.com slash Flask cheat sheet. If you didn't get that, just go to the description below and I have a link to it there. So to get started, I need to import from Flask. So from Flask import Flask. And I'll also be rendering templates. I have a form.html file in a template directory that I haven't started writing yet. And then from Flask WTF, I'm going to import the main class, which is called Flask form. So I'll instantiate the app. And for Flask WT forms to work, you need a secret key. So I'll just say something needs to be secret. This is a secret. Of course, it shouldn't be something this simple. And then I'll create a route. I'll call it form. And I'll be returning form.html. So return render template form HTML. And then finally, I'll run the app down here. So let me start the server, make sure everything is okay. And then I'll start filling in the form.html so I can see something. So not found because I don't have anything on the index. Okay, so form is blank, which is what I want. So on the form, I'll just add some basic HTML here. Okay, now let me make sure that works. All right, so the first thing that I need to do to actually use a form is create the class. So like I said, there's going to be a class that kind of represents the form. So to do this, I'll put this between the configuration and the routes. And I'll call this form, let's say, login form. And I'm going to inherit from Flask form. And then the attributes of this class will be the fields in the form. So my login form is going to have two. I want to have a username and I want to have a password. And this is where I need to start importing from the WT forms library. So I imported from Flask WTF and now I need to import from WT forms because Flask WTF is just a kind of a thin wrapper over WT forms. So you'll be working more with WT forms than Flask WTF. So from WT Forms, what I want to import are two types of fields. And those fields will be a string field and a password field. And the string field will be for the username and the password field will be for the password. So by importing these fields, Flask WT Forms knows how to handle each attribute in the class. So when I use a password field, uh, the password will automatically get some things like the password type in the input. So when you type, it's mask instead of seeing the plain text. Um, and a string field would just be a regular input text. And there are other fields. So here's a list, and I'll put a link to this in the description below for this list. 
you can see the different types of fields that are available. So there's a Boolean field, which is like a checkbox, a date field. Um, you can use hidden fields. Let's see, a select field. So the typical fields that you would expect in an HTML form, they are there. You just have to import them from Flask WT forms. So the first thing that I'll do is the string field. So I'll take string field and then I'll pass in a name for it. And the name, I'll just repeat username. And likewise, I'll do the same thing for password. So password field and password. So now that I have this class in my routes, I need to instantiate the form. So I'll just go form equals login form. And then with this form, if I pass it to my template, I'll be able to use it in the template. So I'll pass it to the template just like that. And now inside of the form.html, I can actually build the form. So what I'll do is I'll say form type or not type, but method is post. And then the action will be say URL for form, which is the name of my routes. It doesn't accept post requests yet, but I'll do that in a moment. And then I'll close out the form here. And then in between, this is where Flask WTF makes it easy. So typically when you're writing a form, you will have to write stuff like this, uh, username, and then all the other inputs. But Flask WT forms make it easy for you. So using that form object that you pass to the template, first you want to use the cross-site request forgery token. This is just to prevent uh, anyone from submitting your form from elsewhere. So just type form.csrf token. And I'll just save that first. And let's see what happens. And let me make sure my app is running. It isn't because I saved with invalid syntax. So I'll start the server again. And I think I didn't import something correctly or yeah, F lowercase L. All right. Okay. So let's go back to form. And so we don't see anything, but if I look at the source, I now see this input ID CSRF token, and I see this long complicated token here. So that's good. That's the first thing that I wanted in my form. So now if I add the other two, I can add form.username and then form.password. And then when I refresh, and take a look at the source, I see two inputs here, and then I see the input values here. So one last thing I'll do to make it a little more clear what's going on is I'll add the label. So form.username.label, and then form.password.label. So as you can see, there's no formatting. I can put HTML around this to format it correctly, but I'll leave it as it is for now. But if I use the labels, I see username and password. And of course, all this can be customized. The label doesn't have to be the same as the name you passed into the field, but that is the default. And then finally, I'll add a submit button. So input type submit value submit. And let's take a look. All right, so I can put in a username I can put in a password and it's hidden and I can hit submit. But now it tells me the method isn't allowed, which is what I'm expecting because I didn't allow for post requests here. So I'll change this to accept both get requests and post requests. And then inside of my form, what I'm going to do is I'm going to check if the form has been submitted. So to do this, you use something called validate on submit. So if form dot validate on submit. So if the form was submitted through a post request and it's valid, it will go into this block here. If the form hasn't been submitted or it's invalid, it will just fall out of that block and continue. So in this case, 
I can return something like the form has been submitted. So now when I go back to the form and I type in anything, hit submit, I see the form has been submitted there. So what if I want to see the values that were submitted in the form? Well, that's pretty easy. All I have to do is first I'll say something. Uh, so the username is blank. The, p the password is blank. And I'll format this with the actual values from the form. So to do this, I'll type form and then the field name, the attribute username. And then to get whatever was passed in, I just add data and similar for the password. So form password data. And now when I do this again, I'll type in random things for the username, random for the password, hit submit. And now I see the username is all that and the password is there. So as you can see, it's a little cleaner handling the form in the routes. And especially when you have bigger forms and a lot of forms, Flask WG forms is great to use. So that's it for this video. In the next video, I'll cover validation for the forms and displaying errors when there are validation errors when the form has been submitted. So I'll include the code for this video in the description below. And if you want that along with the cheat sheet, just go down to the links. I'll also include a link to the fields in Flask WT forms. And finally, if you are interested in any courses on Flask, I am starting to put up courses on prettyprinted.com. So check that out. So that's it for this video. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. Thank you for watching this and I will talk to you next time.